Hi Year 9, this week we're looking at rhythm and metre as your musical element. Um, this will just be a revision session because we've already talked about time signature in your Key Stage 3 lessons and obviously a lot of you um, are very advanced with your music and will understand that. So it's quite a quick little revision. So there are two types of time signature or metre we call it um, and they are simple and compound time. So simple time just means a nice straightforward crotchet or minimum beat. Now we might look at something like 4-4 four, four to start with. So if I just draw this on here for you, if we see 4-4 four, four like this, we look at the top number and know that that's telling us how many beats are in a bar. So how many, the quantity. This bottom number is telling us what type of beats. So when we see a four at the bottom, we know that means crotchet beats. So this would mean four crotchets per bar. Now obviously they don't necessarily have to be all crotchets, but they have to be kind of grouped like crotchets. So maybe two quavers, for example, let me just write that out for you. So we could have two quavers, we could have a crotchet and perhaps we could have a minim there and this bar line. So that would look like one crotchet, two crotchets, three crotchets, four crotchets, so four, four. We also see that time signature often written like this, which is a meaning common time, because this is the most common time. So that means four crotchets in a bar. Now, if we had obviously three, four, the top number, remember, means the quantity of beats in that bar, so three, and four just means crotchets again, so what type of beat? So three, four means three crotchets in a bar, two, four means two crotchets in a bar. Now, if we change that bottom number to something like a two, so for example, in this time signature, we now have two beats in a bar because the top number means the quantity of beats and the two at the bottom now means minims it's referring to minims so two minims in a bar now you might think to yourself wait a minute two minims in a bar is the same as four crotches you're correct mathematically it is but it might look slightly different on your music okay so you might see something like that which is the most obvious way that some this could be classified as four four because there's still four crotchets but actually it looks more like 2-2 two, two because it's two minims. Now, the only real reason that we might use 2-2 two, two might be because it's called a la breve time, meaning half time, because a piece might be really fast, for example, something like the Sonata Pathétique, the first movement of that by Beethoven, where the tempo is really fast, dum 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 and so on, which means you wouldn't want to count conduct four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, even though those crotchets are still present, it's much easier to think in minims, one, two, one, two, instead of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we feel the pulse as two minims rather than four crotchets. So two, two would mean two minims in a bar. You could have four, two, you could have eight, two. Okay, um, so that's four and two at the bottom. Let's now talk about eight because this means it makes things slightly different. So here we go, we now have a time signature of six, eight. So obviously the top number is gonna be six beats in a bar and the eight is obviously going to be quavers because four was a crotchet, two was a minimum, so eight is gonna mean quavers. So six quavers in a bar, so I'll just draw those for you. Okay. Now you might think to yourself, what, what other time do you know that would be equal to six eight and you think right six quavers that's the same as three crotchets so three four is the same as six eight well yes it sort of is but in another way it's not because the way we would play three four would sound very different to six eight and this is the reason why it's where those stresses go can you see in three four yes there are six quavers but these are grouped together like crotchets. Can you see that? Two quavers equals a crotchet. So if I was to clap this or sing it, da 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 da. One and two and three and. One and two and three and. So can you hear that one is the most important beat, but also we've got a stress on two and three, okay? Whereas if I was doing this, can you see it's still got the same amount of quavers, but six eight is grouped in threes quavers, which equate to a dotted crotchet. Can you see that look? So if I just do that one, two. So three quavers equals one and a half which is the same as a dotted crotchet isn't it? So now if I was to do this one two three four five six one two three four five six. Can you see now the stresses on the quaver one and four which gives us a really really different feel. 
So mathematically, these look exactly the same, but when we actually look into them musically, the stresses are indifferent, and also they make a huge difference to the way we play the music. So we call 3-4, simple time, because it has three crotchet beats, simple crotchets, but this one we call compound time. And we don't call this compound triple, just because it's got the same amount as 3-4, we can see that there are two dotted crotchet beats, so we call that compound duple time. Two dotted crotchet beats. So I'm just going to conduct three, four. This is one and two and three and one and two and three and. You could do that with me. And let's now conduct compound duple, which is two dotted crotchet beats. So we conduct it like two, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So here, this is simple triple time. And here, this is compound duple time. So I'm just going to do another one of those and see if you can work out what time signature this is then. Talk amongst yourselves. Here we go. Right, there's my bar now. We're going to work out what key signature this is. Right, first of all, we count the amount of quavers or we can look at it as well and we can get an idea of where those beats are going to be. Well this, these are, are grouped together aren't they? So this is like a dotted crotchet's worth again. This is a crotchet and a quaver so if we group those together we have another dotted crotchet's worth and here's a dotted crotchet on its own. So we've already sort of seen that. If we count the amount of quavers that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is nine, eight, nine quavers in a bar. Now those beats look like that, that and that, okay? So we've got one dotted crotchet beat, two dotted crotchet beats, three dotted crotchet beats. So can we see that this is compound time, not simple, but compound dotted crotchet beats. And there are three of them, so we call this compound triple time. And if I was to conduct this, I'd want to conduct that in three, but my beats are compound. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Dum, 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 dum. Okay? So there's the difference between simple and compound time for you. Obviously, if it was 12-8, we divide those into the groups of three, which gives us four dotted crotchet beats, and that would be compound quadruple. Okay, so there we have simple and compound time. Obviously, you get irregular time signatures as well, things like 7-8, where they don't kind of go into um, a, a simple dotted crotchet beat or a, a, a normal simple beat as well. So... Um, there are regular time signatures and 5-8 and things like that, but uh, that's, that's another matter. Okay, so that's a little bit about simple and compound time, and you'll be answering questions on that later. I very quickly, before we go on, want to talk about um, triplets, just very quickly, because that's another extra thing that we've done before, but I'd like to revise. So, a triplet just means three in the time of two, okay? So if we look at this now, here. Okay, so these are three in the time of two. So these three quavers we're going to play in the time of two quavers. Okay, so instead of them being worth, if we didn't have that, a dotted crotchet, okay, they'd actually be worth a crotchet. So here's my crotchet beat one, two, three, four. If I then want to put that into quavers, I just go. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. But now I want to add three quavers in the time of two. So I'm going to go one and da 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 one two three one two three da 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 da. Can you hear that? Da 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 da. And just on my, I do it on the wall actually. You'll see this. So here, here's my quavers. One, two, oh no, I'm going to do it the other way. One, two, three. Here's my quavers here. Can you hear that? So I've got three quavers in my right hand and two quavers in my left hand. Okay? So triplets. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be quaver triplets. We could have crotchet triplets. So say, for example, we have this written down. So now, instead of three crotchets in the time, we want three crotchets in the time of two crotchets. So essentially a minim. So here, we're just going to do three crotchets in the time of two crotchets. So in my, in now my four, four, one, two, three. So these are crotchets, I'm just tapping here. I want to put three crotchets in the time of two crotchets, which is a minim. So I'm going to go 
da 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 one two three four da 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 okay so we've got triplets just to remind you about those obviously we can have other things like quintuplets sextuplets octuplets non-triplets all those things but we'll we'll talk about that um later on 